You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. into your inner being and discover the tools needed to find your life-fulfilling purpose. This is Live Without Limits with host Davida Shensky. Davida will discuss how our personalities and careers can fit together or how to adapt your personality for your career. So please welcome the host of Live Without Limits, Davida Shensky. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. Today's show is called Lessons Learned from Immigrants on Entrepreneurship. The first thing you need to consider is how to develop a mindset of resiliency and integrity combined with hunger for success. The key is how well, you're able to cope with life surprises. In resilience, we adjust to changes and challenges as well as develop the ability to spring back emotionally after dealing with stressful periods. Research on resilience suggests a number of traits to help us following difficult and stressful life events. These characteristics for building resistance Resilience can be divided into three major things. The first one being attitude, providing the outlook, focus, and psychological support that you lead to personal growth. The second being resilience, skill development, learning and applying techniques for problem solving, changing your perception empathetic listening and communication effectively with others. Third being healthy lifestyle, supporting the physical and emotional energy needed to recharge your batteries. And many years ago, I often heard my mother talking about her uncle. And why did she talk about her uncle? Because when this country was being founded by immigrants, many of them brought their skills with them. And I remember her talking about Uncle Barney. And why was she talking about Uncle Barney? Because he lived in a high rise where he worked as a janitor. And then he went to work for the steel mill and was willing to work for the owner for free until the owner could pay him a salary. Therefore, it was in the owner's will that his sons could not fire Uncle Bonnie. They had to let him work until he was ready to retire. He worked into his 70s, and he actually lived to be 99. And in his latter years, what he would do is he would winter in Florida and summer in New York, where he came from. And how he passed away was one morning he waked, he woke up early and he was thinking it was time to get dressed and go down for breakfast. And he fell down the steps and split his head open. But the fact of the matter was that what he did was typical of that time because what happened after that was many of the immigrants' children, the first generation born in this country, they went 
and fought for their country in World War II. What that led to was when men left the factories, women went to work. And this was also the beginning of the growth of the corporation. But prior to that, when the immigrants first came to the country, what they brought with them was their skills. And whereas in their home country, where they would go home to home selling their products, when they came to the United States, they took their wares, they put them on push carts, and they sold them on street corners. Those push carts eventually went into department stores and grew into corporations. Now, that first generation that went to work for the corporations, they worked 25 years, and then after 25 years, they got their retirement party with a gold watch. And when many of them retired, they expected to live comfortably on Social Security because they had paid into it with the money they earned working for the corporation. Their children, who were known as the baby boomer generation, went to work for the corporations as well. But around the latter part of the 20th century, what did we see happen? We saw corporations merging and having two to three people doing the same job. So what did they do? They offered buyout packages. In those buyout packages, their employees had six months salary given to them along with their health care coverage. This allowed them to decide whether or not being self-employed was for them because that was also the time of the big growth of the dot-com era. It was also the time of the Y2K era as we moved from one century to the other century. And you started seeing a lot of consulting come out of that. Then what we also found that with every subsequent generation that there's no such thing as a buyout package and employees are no longer loyal to the company and the company is no longer loyal to the employees. But what we have seen is the outgrowth of the internet and going back to the small business only instead of them working on street corners, they now work from home on the internet through websites, because those websites are their storefronts to, to, excuse me, to the the prospects. So what we're seeing here is how your mindset needs to change and be aware that you no longer work for a salary, but you work for a commission And a lot of these stores, what they're doing, in essence, is that the stores on the Internet are your websites. And if I have a product to sell and I have customers, what I do is I offer them the opportunity to work as an affiliate. In essence, what they're doing is they're becoming my sales force and I pay them commission to help me sell my products. What that does is it helps lower the cost of the overhead of using a middleman to get the product into the stores because you're going directly to the customer now and your customer becomes your sales force so that what we're seeing is the understanding of how you need to change and look at how you can change your attitudes of what is business today and how business is being conducted because we're no longer small communities. We're now a global community. 
And with that global community becomes competition worldwide. And I'm Davida Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits, and we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, what we're going to talk about is how to leverage a support system. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smith Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back. I'm Davida Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits, and we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to leverage a support system. The idea that no one succeeds alone is especially true for immigrants. The executives with whom I spoke called the role of parents, community, and even friends with a common interest as contributing to their success. Entrepreneurship is lonelier than you think it is. Sometimes nobody seems to understand what you want to accomplish. That's why entrepreneurs should think about joining a support group. There are several. I recently joined a Vistage group designed for CEOs, business owners, and executives in small to mid-sized business. Vistage membership offers a lot of benefits. Once a month, I meet with my coach, and once a month, a group of fellow entrepreneurs gets together for a day of learning and sharing. Entrepreneurs may be confident and even cocky, but we don't have the answers to everything. And while we may not lack confidence, we may lack experience. The answer is that working with a mentor and a Vistage group is exactly the kind of place to find and appropriate one. Now, what I want to talk to talk to you about is when I started my business, it was simply because I was someone with a disability and didn't have the same opportunities as everyone else of my peers who entered the workforce. Therefore, I had to look at things in a different way and how was I going to earn an income and be independent. And I knew that I had skills that I had learned in school that I wanted to use. And it basically evolved. First, I looked at offering group therapy, doing using psychodrama and transactional analysis 
But the one thing that I found was because I didn't have a master's degree, no matter what I did in talking to these mental health associations and facilities, that they were not going to bring me in on a contract basis. And then I looked and I thought, well, hey, I have good experience And I really enjoyed when I was in school standing up in front of the room and giving book reports. So then I moved into public speaking and learning the skills I needed to become very good at being a professional speaker. And I did this by going to Toastmasters and joining my local National Speakers Association, where I learned the eight platform skills. Also, I had the opportunity to work with these training companies where I traveled around and presented their programs. Now, that was at a time when you didn't have the Internet and Now what is happening is that many of the professional speakers who were used to going to associations and giving keynote speeches, going into corporations and doing training, now they have to relearn those skills and how to take them and apply them to work within the new technology. And in their case, it's a matter of joining groups like I'm in a group called Peers on Demand where each week you have a conference call with a different speaker and the participants in the conference call make suggestions to the presenter on things that they can do and where they can go to enhance their skills and learn how to use the technology to grow and build a business online. What I've been able to do is through Skillshare, post classes where I'm teaching a skill. And what that does is for every minute that someone listens to my videos, I get paid. If I go on Udemy, I can post those courses. You can go into and create webinars. And what I'm doing is I'm using a platform called Builderall. And why am I on that platform? Because I can build e-learning courses. I can also post webinars. And I can write my articles and attach these to sales funnels because it's a matter of understanding how to take what's going on today and applying that. Now, for me, I had to be very goal-oriented and very independent because the support systems within my family were not there because in their mind, they saw the disability first, but they didn't see the ability that I have, and they didn't give me the encouragement that I needed to push myself. Luckily for me, I had the support systems outside of the family, through friends, through through organizations that I belong to, through people I met when I would go to the gym to exercise. Whatever you do, you have to find what works for you, how to make it work, how to create that support system that's going to help you to get the times that when you're down and you are not sure what it is that you need to do that a mentor can help you to sit down and write out your goals, write down all the little things that will take you what it means to get 
where it is that you are now to where it is that you want to be in the future. And that support system really helps you. And I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. And we're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back in the next segment, we'll talk about how to develop a zeal for knowledge. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to develop the zeal for knowledge. Much has been written about the diminishing value of a college degree. In the end, each of the successful individuals with whom I smoke view educational attainment is merely a representation of the broader zeal for knowledge embodied by successful individuals. Adam Muhammad, CEO and founder of Live Stories, echoed that sentiment. Although we abandon all our material possessions, no one could take away my parents' education and zeal for knowledge. He came to the United States from Bangladesh because he understood that a great education provided the best opportunities for both him and his family. Many immigrants in the past came to live a better quality of life, and many entrepreneurs today, parents and grandparents, were the immigrants of the past. Now, what we're seeing is we have a president that's literally being very discriminatory because it doesn't matter where you come from because in the past, in the 20th century, many of the immigrants actually came from Europe and Eastern Europe. And what we're seeing today is they're coming from Central and South America but they're also coming because they're being oppressed and they're not given the opportunities to get the education and the skills they need. And if you really look at what's happening, many of the third world countries, many of them, like India, they're taking over the jobs of the Americans because they have, in essence, learned that if they wanted to get ahead in life, if they wanted to grow, they had to look for opportunities and ways to earn an income, 
with the internet, what we've seen is the, the outgrowth of virtual assistants. And this is an opportunity for someone to work from home. What they do is they have to have a broad skill base of understanding of search engine optimization, of content marketing, of social media marketing. And what that means is that if I'm an entrepreneur and I want to work on the skills that are my strengths, then I'm going to outsource this work to someone else who can take over that job and do it for me so that I can concentrate on writing the e-learning courses, the webinars, getting those things posted and marketing them. And it, whether it's me marketing them or whether I outsource it, the idea is that you want to gain the skills necessary. We are truly a global economy today because if I have a website, it's open 24-7. In the past, if you went and you were interested in shopping, what would you do? You went to a strip mall or you went to a mall. But guess what? Your store is part of a mall on the Internet. It's understanding how to take this, how to take it from where you are right now, how to expand what you're doing and create opportunities for yourself. We can learn from immigrants that especially those in third world countries in China, China and the Chinese and the Asians are far advanced when it comes to technology, to the sciences, to the skills needed that's going to create the opportunities to build a job for yourself, to create the education, and so many times you, f you find people who they think that, wow, once they've gotten out of college, they've finished their education, but guess what? If you think that way, then life is going to pass you by, because what we're seeing is that with the probes out in the universe trying to discover what's going on there, the lifespan of the stars, that what scientists see often changes the technology. Now, wh what would have happened to Apple if you had never had Steve Jobs, who was so innovative, if all he did was think and end at, at just creating the personal computers? But he could think of ways to incorporate technology and advance it, that now you have digital, which means that you can do podcasts like we're doing here, or you can create music that someone can download to their iTunes or their, their Android phones and they can listen to whatever they want to at any time. You're finding people who that may have not gone to actual college, but they've gone to technical schools, or they've learned and played with how to use SoundCloud to create music, how to mix music, how to make it sound better, there's just so many different things that you see, and it's always that how are you going to improve the quality of life that you're living today and live a better quality of life? You often hear of people saying how they want to they want to work from home or that they want to be have the option of traveling around the world and still be able to work. Well, you've got financial advisors that because a lot of their work is being done online, they can 
work while they're traveling and keep in touch with their clients through Skype. And I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. And you're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we will talk about how to understand the problems at a deeper level and find or build a company that allows you to solve them. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. See and understand problems at a deeper level. Find or build a company that allows you to solve them. What we're talking about here is to find an industry that you really want to work in and then find that niche that needs the help that you can fulfill because it's more about zeroing down and even though it may seem like it's still a small amount of people but that if you can key in on their issues and their problems then you can create a relationship with them and you can create an opportunity for yourself to serve them and build a business around them. Generating new ideas, recognizing previously unseen problems, and overcoming challenges with unique solutions all require the creativity to see and understand problems at a deeper level. Studying abroad for even one semester has been shown to increase creativity in college students. Imagine the benefits of adjusting to and living in an entirely new culture. Life stories. Muhammad has a keen understanding and appreciation for the problem his company solves. His father worked in Bangladeshi government, which is consistently ranked among the most corrupt in the world. He quickly noted that while his father wasn't corrupt, He saw many examples through him. I had a front row seat to how information can be manipulated to benefit the few, Muhammad says. That picture stuck with me and subconsciously it led me to start Life Stories as a company dedicated to helping governments around the world effectively use and communicate information. What we're seeing here is if you look at 
back in the 20th century and how things were done then, than how they're being done today. And let me back up a little bit and tell you about some friends of mine and the stories that they told me. I have a friend, Paula, who's father came from Greece and what he did was he went to work for a shipping company and worked his way up into management and then where did we go from there we saw the changeover of how that generation brought their skills and how it has changed to work on the internet today just like Muhammad found a niche in dealing with corrupt governments, you we need to look at solutions that you can find to problems. And here's one to think about. Today, as the baby boomer generation ages, they're beginning to develop more health problems, or rather we're seeing as technology and sciences have advanced that there's more recognition of problems that were always there but never recognized as what they were. Because remember, back in the 19th century, the mentally ill were looked at as witches and warlocks and burned at the stake. Then in the 20th century, as technology and science became more incorporated, they began to understand that mental illness was caused by an imbalance in the, the chemicals in the brain. And if this goes and doesn't get taken care of, or if the individual, once he's diagnosed and gets on medication, gets off his medication, then it's often an in and out of the mental health hospitals to get the medication regulated so they can live out in the community and live a fulfilling job. And also what we're seeing is that they have found that marijuana with medicinal purposes can help pain and cancer. So what's happening is you're seeing countries like Canada and Colorado and the United States passing laws that allow individuals to grow the cannabis and sell it for medicinal reasons and it be adjusted and manipulated so that the, the oils are used and not the actual marijuana that gets the high, but the oils that help reduce the pain. And I remember someone putting together a plan for an individual that what she wanted to do was sell the paraphernalia. So what she had the stuff in her home, or, or rather in her garage, stopped. And she, instead of looking at how to, to key it into what group of people are not being served that can use her services, which is people who are homebound, who need the paraphernalia and can't get out to the pipe stores to get the products that either she can home deliver it or she can do through mail order. So what you want to do is whatever industry you're in, look at it. Look at your competition. Look at what's going on with them. What are they doing and what are they not doing? And where is there a niche of people who are not being served that you can meet? For instance, in the story that I just told you, that that individual... Her, her niche were people who were homebound, and yet she couldn't see that. What she was seeing was the whole wide of save, serving everyone. But you can't serve everyone. You can serve a few, and as your knowledge and experience grows and your reputation grows, then you can key in and sell 
more, your services at a higher price. So I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. This is Live Without Limits, and we're coming to you from BBM and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, the next thing we were talking about is how to pursue change. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Welcome back. I'm... Davida Shinsky, this is Live Without Limits, and we're on BBM and TuneIn Radio. In this segment, we're going to talk about how to pursue change. Choosing to immigrate to a new country is a conscious pursuit of change. For many, it can be a matter of survival. Fear is a great motivator, according to Muhammad. Immigrants know what they are running from, and that drives them to make sure that the new life doesn't reflect their old conditions. Once in a new country, every aspect of immigrants' life continues to change and forces them to be more open-minded and adaptable. Immigrants must work incredibly hard to adjust to a new culture and way of life, explains Dinha. They often have to work harder and learn more than their native-born counterpart because of language, culture, and social barriers. We didn't have the luxury of being able to fail, says Marta Manko. We had to quickly pivot and change if things weren't working which minimized losses and identified exactly what worked. In the end, the immigrant advantage has less to do with any special traits and more to do with pursuing the advantages offered by freedom. Every competency that makes the immigrant successful is equally available to native-born citizens. That makes seeing, appreciating, and acting on native-born citizens opportunities, the most important lessons everyone can learn. Dinha says it well. An immigrant knows a good opportunity when he or she sees one. That's how they got here in the first place. Now, if you remember back in the late part of the 70s, Patafi had saved $200,000, founded a company that pioneered electronic stock trades, executing 
them before the exchanges were even digitized. In the 1990s, he began to concentrate on, on the sell side of the business, founding Interactive Brokers Group, which has a market cap of $14 billion. Pedafee 72 is now worth an estimated $12.6 billion. And Thomas Pedafee embodies the American dream. So does Google founder Sergey Brin, who's worth $37.5 billion. And eBay founder Pierre Audemeyer, who's worth $8.1 billion. And Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk is now worth $11.6 billion. Rupert Murdoch, George Soros, Jerry Yang, Mickey Arison, Patrick Soon, Xing, Jan Kor, Jeff Skoll, Jorge Perez, Peter Thiel. And what this is showing you is that these are people who came from other parts of the other countries to the United States and how they brought their skills with them and how they incorporated them. What we're also seeing now is that you've got a lot of immigrants that are willing to walk and leave their homeland just simply because they want a better life. And yet we're all seeing where President Trump has denied them the right to come in this country basically by calling and saying that that what with just 4,600 immigrants grew into tens of thousands and that you had criminals coming over the border. And yes, you may see some of the criminals, but the majority of the people who are willing to walk to take the chance of their children along the way that what they want is a better quality of life. And why they come to the United States, why has it become a melting pot? All you have to do is go back to the early part of the 20th century and look at the reasons that these people came over here. And in 1960, you found a lot of Cubans who came to this country. And what's happening today is you're saying, oh, well, these are uneducated people. Well, what if you gave them the opportunity to get the education that they couldn't get in their homeland? What would they bring to it? What You don't know who's the next scientist. You don't know who's the, the next innovator, who the next cr- has the creative mind that what would they do? They would bring their skills and they would create the opportunities that other people have done. Precisely, 42 slots on the Forbes 400 belong to naturalized citizens who immigrated to America. That's 10.5% of the list. A huge overperformance considering that naturalized citizens make up only 6% of the United States population. You add non-citizens, about 13% of American residents are foreign born but there is also a slew of non-citizens, billionaires, such as Chobani Yoka, King Honey Ukabaya, and we, we work founder Adam Newman, who by dint of their passports don't qualify for the 400, but still live and create jobs in the United States. For all the political bombast about immigrants being an economic drain or a security threat, the pace of economic hyper-success among immigrants is increasing. Go back 10 years, and the number of immigrants on the Forbes 400 was 35. 
20 years ago, it was 26. And 30 years ago, it was 20. Not only is the American dream thriving, it's measured by the yardstick of entrepreneurial success, the Forbes 400, but it's also never been stronger. The combined net worth of 42 immigrants, fortunes is $248 billion. And there's no telling what that group of immigrants who come from South America or Central America can bring once they gain the education and the opportunity to contribute. I'm your host, Davida Shimsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, what we're going to do is review what we've been talking about, and we will reference what our next show will be about. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky. You're listening to Live Without Limits. We're coming to you live from BBM and TuneIn Radio. And now what we're going to do is go back and talk about some of the things that we covered in today's show. First of all, we talked about how to develop the mindset of resiliency and integrity combined with the hunger for success. And in this segment, we talked about how the key is how well we're able to cope with life surprises and be resilient and adjust to the changes and challenges, as well as develop the ability to spring back emotionally in dealing with a stressful period. Stress can cause health problems, and you need to look at and find, figure out how to deal with stress so that it does not and can pull you back from achieving and setting goals. The next thing we talked about how to have and leverage a support system and how important this is because there is no one succeeds alone and especially true when it comes to immigrants. The executives with whom I spoke cited that the role of parents, community, and even friends with a common interest as contributing to their success, that everyone needs a support system in their life. You cannot succeed without someone else being there to support you and help you to to keep moving forward because no matter what happens, there are going to be down times and having a mentor that tells you what you're doing and keeps you in the right frame of mind is going to contribute to your success in the future. And the last, the next thing we talked about was how to develop a zeal for knowledge. That knowledge is something that, and learning is ongoing forever. We never stop learning simply because everything is constantly changing and you need to incorporate change into everything you do. And the next thing we talked about was how to see and understand problems on a deeper level, how to find or build a company that allows you to solve them. 
understanding how when it comes to serving and building a business, you need to not only understand the industry that you're in, but you want to find out who is being underserved and how you can help them get the services that they deserve. For instance, I was talking to someone and he happens to live in an area where it's cold and there's a lot of aging people who can't get out to get their medication. And what he wants to do is build a business around serving that community and helping them get their medication delivered whenever they need it. And then the last thing that we talked about, how to pursue change. And what we're talking here is that choosing to immigrate to a new country is a conscious pursuit of change. And for many, it can be a matter of survival. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the tech that Next week's show is going to be about the techniques to improve work-life balance in business simply because you want to have the time to relax and be successful in your business. So look at those things, figure out how you can do them and how you can incorporate them into your everyday activity and life that go out and reduce stress by exercising and have a daily plan on how you and the activities that you're going to do to build your business and reach your goals. This has been Live Without Limits with host Davida Shensky. Join the conversation each week as Davida will talk careers, entrepreneurship, communication, and leadership. Don't dream about your career. Let Davida help you get there on Live Without Limits. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company